In this demo, I'm going to show you how to define and use an attached behavior. The scenario that we'll tackle is that if we were going to present a collection of items in some sort of selector, it could be a list view or a grid view, and in this demo I'll use a grid view. And we needed to invoke some logic in our view model when items were selected. It may be that we need to go make a subsequent service call to look up the details for that item, or something like that needs to happen back in the view model by virtue of the selection that the user made. The problem is that a selector has no commands that it can raise. And if you remember, commands are a primary form of communication to make things happen in the view model based on user interaction. So I need some way to bridge the gap from the fact that a selector will raise a selection changed event, and I need the net result to be to execute a command against my view model. And that's where the behavior comes in. So let me start by adding class that I will call selection change command behavior. In this class, first thing I'm going to do is make it public and static because all the contents of it are going to be static attached properties and their change handler methods. I'm going to define two attached properties on this class. I'm going to use the built-in code snippet prop A, tab tab. The first one is going to be of type I command and its name is going to simply be command. The owner class is the selection change command behavior itself, and the default value in the code snippet is null. So I need to resolve a couple things. I'm going to bring in using statements for the system windows input for the I command, the system windows, or the windows UI XAML for the dependency object, and that should be all I need there. So at this point, this is nothing more than a normal attached property. This can be attached to any dependency object simply by setting it in the XAML with a class name dot property name syntax similar to grid.row or grid.column. Now, hand in hand with commands are command parameters. So I'm going to define a second attached property called command parameter. So prop A code snippet again. This one can carry any command parameter type, so it will be type object, and its name is command parameter. Its owner class, again, is the selection change behavior, and the default is null. So now we have these two attached properties. The way an attached behavior works is that the attached property is set on some object in the XAML, and when it's set, a change callback handler can be invoked. That change callback handler is passed a reference to the element on which it's being set, and then it can access the exposed API of that object. So the idea is we're going to attach this command property to some selector, and we want to hook up to the selection changed event and cause it to fire the underlying command value or execute it when that occurs. So to do that, we need some implementation. I'm going to go down here to the bottom and pull in some implementation. I'm going to resolve a couple things to bring in their using statements. And let's look at what we have here. We have a change callback handler that gets past the dependency object on which the command property is being attached. It can then cast that to a selector, the base class for things like grid views and list views. If that cast does not succeed, we don't really want the app to blow up if they inadvertently hook this up to the wrong element, so we just silently do nothing. But if it is a selector, we can subscribe to the selection changed event, and whenever that fires in the future, what we need to do is go and get the current value of the command property that is attached to that element, and get the command parameter property. Then we check whether we got a command, because it could be not set, which would result in a null value. As long as we have one, the pattern for commands, if you remember, is that you call can execute to see if it's appropriate to execute the command. If that returns a true, then you can go ahead and execute the command. So we set, set up that pattern here, passing along the parameter if any was set. And now we have invoked the target command on the object that was set as the command property. Now there's one more piece is we have to call on command changed when the property actually gets set. And the way you do that is you go up to the property declaration, 
to the property metadata associated with that and call that method as a callback handler for the change of that property. Now this behavior is ready to go. To hook it up in the view, we simply go over to the view and find the selector that we want to watch for selection changes on, which is going to be a grid view in this sample, and we set those two attached properties. You can see that the setting here is you set that property just like you would grid.row or grid.column. You just need a little extra syntax for the namespace that they're defined in. And the value that we're going to set it to here, similar to previous demos where we expose a command from the view model, is we just set it through a binding, expecting that a I command property named title selected command will be exposed from our view model. And to carry along a meaningful command parameter when that executes, you can see we're setting the command parameter using a relative source binding of self that's going to point to the grid view itself from which we can get the selected item property and carry that along as a command parameter. So that will basically pass the selected title object down with the command when it executes. Now let's look at what we need in our view model. All we need is a command property that gets initialized to a handling method. So I'm going to bring in one more code snippet here. And you can see that in the constructor for our view model now, we initialize a title selected command that's defined to be a relay command of title, expecting you to pass a title object as a parameter. And in this case, to keep it simple, our handling method is just going to pop a message dialog. Now, in general, you shouldn't pop message dialogs from your view model. That's both dictating appearance and it's keeping you from being unit testable. But for demo purposes, this will be good enough. With that in place, let's go ahead and run. You can see that it loads data from the Netflix OData service as before. And when we select a title, we get our message dialog telling us what we selected. So you can see with a reasonably small chunk of totally reusable code, we now have a behavior that we can hook up to any selector and invoke any command on any view model.